We have designed this study, which is called NOCT, which is, stands for Nitrogen Aerosol Composition. <laughs> we'll just let that finish. It stands for Nitrogen Aerosol Composition in Halogens on a Tall Tower. It's also the German word for night, which turns out to be a very important component of the study, as I'll tell you about in just a minute. Uh, the real goal of this study is a story about chlorine. And it's very interesting because we're studying what's in the air, and most people don't really think of chlorine as being something that might be in the air. You think of it more as something that you would use to disinfect a swimming pool, or maybe if you uh, are used to the word chloride, you think of it as part of sodium chloride that's table salt. Uh, but you really don't think of it as something that's in the air. Uh, scientists, on the other hand, have known for many decades that chlorine is a really important component of what goes on in the air, especially in the lower atmosphere where we're making these measurements. And uh, although scientists have known for a long time that there must be uh, a fairly significant source of chlorine to the atmosphere and that it has really important effects, including uh, affecting regional air quality, including affecting things that are important to the Earth's climate, like uh, ozone and methane, uh, there has been no really clear understanding of where chlorine comes from in the air. Now, we made a discovery a few years ago, uh, in 2006 to be exact, when we were working uh, actually uh, near a coastline on a NOAA research vessel, and we discovered a new uh, aspect of atmospheric chlorine chemistry. In fact, Jim Roberts here was the person who made that discovery. And that was the presence of this compound called nitrile chloride. And what was really surprising to us when we did that study on a coastal site was that we had predicted the levels that we would observe before we went. And what we actually found was about 20 times larger than the predicted source when we were on a coastline. And so we got very interested in this problem at that time, about five years ago. And the very even more intriguing part of this story happened a few years after that when we were working on our instruments in Boulder, Colorado right at our laboratories down the road from here, and we found nearly the same levels of this compound, this chlorine compound, in, in, right here in Boulder. And that was really surprising because we knew that what, what we had seen on the coastline was in some way related to the ocean. It was related to sea salt. And yet we were seeing the same sorts of effects a thousand miles from a coastline and a mile above sea level. And what that meant to us was that we were really looking at something that was not a small player in terms of its effect on atmospheric chemistry, regional air quality, and global climate, but something that was actually a much more important phenomenon that really needed to be understood and for which there had been no previous understanding. Effectively shut off when the sunlight is present. So we're all standing in brisk sunlight right now, um, and the chemistry we're talking about actually doesn't occur when the sun is out. But when it gets dark, this compound, nitrile chloride, actually builds to appreciable levels and becomes a really important player in the atmosphere. Pollutants that are involved in this particular phenomenon, for example, make ozone. And ozone is something that is a regulated pollutant that's bad for people's health and that is, uh, is certainly harmful for people to breathe. And this particular chemistry plays into the same kinds of chemical cycles that are related to these common air pollutants that make ozone. So if we really want to understand ozone on a regional scale and understand uh, how that ozone might be affecting people's health, we need to understand what's going on with this chemistry. By the same token, ozone is a greenhouse gas that affects the Earth's climate, and methane is another greenhouse gas that affects the Earth's climate, and this chlorine chemistry will affect the concentrations of both ozone and methane in the atmosphere. So to understand both regional air quality and health impacts, to understand the effect of various emission sources on the global climate, we need to understand what's going on on this tower behind us right now. So we'll just add briefly that what we're going to see in the instrument package is an instrument to measure nitrile chloride, which is of course what you want to have. We're going to see an instrument that measures those oxides of nitrogen that are making it. And then there's an interesting aspect to this whole chemistry that requires particle surfaces and it requires a source of soluble chloride Chloride, again, we, we think of salt, table salt, as having chloride in it. Uh, Windblown dust has chloride in it. We put chloride in the form of salt on the roads in the wintertime. So we need to understand the sources of soluble chloride and the amount of particle surface area that's available for this reaction to take place. And so we're going to see we're going to see four of those main instruments that are in this instrument package. Actually, 
an entire chemical laboratory in here. The, uh, the instruments that are in here are um, instruments that the investigators that you've uh, interviewed or seen today have all built themselves from scratch using really very new technologies. Some of these technologies have only been available for a few years. And that's one of the reasons we're able to understand this particular phenomenon now where we hadn't been able to understand it in the past. 